welcome to india nungen news our guest today is menka haryani she is a founder of tedx and robert a cyber security expert in the past she has worked with a uh, all state and uh, etnt in cyber security also she is a mentor for a lot of young students affiliated with the harvard business school as well as northeastern university on march 8 we are going to honor her as one of the 10 outstanding women of 2025 at our annual women of the year awards gala i did my first skydiving in 2010 in 2016 i did my first solo jump where i jumped from 18000 feet above the ground I started my career in cybersecurity at Harvard University where I started teaching as an assistant faculty for the cloud security course and after doing that course uh, I joined Lookout where I was managing the entire portfolio for AT&T uh managing three different products AT&T um, mobile security AT&T business wifi and AT&T active armor and in my recent role at Allstate I was managing two different product verticals uh like cybersecurity and digital family safety In 2021 I decided to overcome my fear of public speaking and that's when I started speaking at several industry conferences and after uh, appearing at many stages I decided to create a platform of my own and that's when TEDx Andover was formed. Menka welcome to our studio. Thank you so much for having me. Excellent. It's so very exciting to see you. Of course yeah no I'm really honored to be uh, listed into the outstanding top women uh top 10 women for uh the women of the year 2025 so uh menka um you came up with this uh, tedx and over idea you mm-hmm. you founded this and uh so how do you come with this idea and uh how long it took to start that let's start your journey from there sure yeah so uh honestly speaking i have been like super scared i always had this fear of public speaking and until 2021 i never spoke on stage but in that year i decided that i wanted to overcome this fear so i started speaking at a lot of industry conferences and one thing i realized was surprisingly that um, although i thought i was not good at it but uh, i did like a brilliant job i got a lot of praise from the attendees uh and a lot of industry recognition as well uh after speaking at many many conferences uh i had to obviously as a woman of color i had to face a lot of challenges and that's when i decided i wanted to create a platform that only promoted great ideas um no matter where they're coming from so so yeah. uh, so which year did you start that uh, tedx uh, i started tedx and over in 2023 20. so it was a journey of two years it took me two years to uh host my first event in 2023 so what was the process like if you want to host uh, what do you have to do uh, it's a very lengthy process application process you have to go through ted uh you have to present so before even uh you can host your own event you have to present your ideas uh, approximately 5 to 6 ideas presented to the ted team and if they shortlist your ideas and they see that they obviously do their own fact checking that do you have the leadership qualities and not to host a event like that and uh do you have the budget to host your first event because you might not get sponsors so you need to have a certain amount in your bank uh that you can showcase that okay you have the leadership skills uh you have what it takes to be a tedx speaker first and then once you showcase those skills and you go through the application process of ted which approximately took took me almost a year and a half and once i got my tedx license i hosted my first event in 2023 so now i mean tedx is a phenomenon yeah. i mean if you go in you know art culture entertainment mm-hmm. you know uh so I mean you yeah. think a topic and tedx talk mm-hmm. is i see so wonderful you know service yeah. and job they do so how uh, difficult is the process to get the tedx license it is i would say it's super difficult because uh you need you need to showcase that you have great innovative ideas that have not already been presented on the ted stage so you need to do your own thorough research first i worked with a coaching company who helped me refine my own ideas that i could present to the ted uh for the approval in the applications and uh so as you may already know 
it takes approximately like an on an average 86 applications 86 yeah. attempts to get your chance to speak at the TEDx 86. stage. 86. Yes. So now let's come back to it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I've never had yeah, any experience yeah. with a TEDx. So uh, you said that you need to have some amount of money in the yes. account before they mm -hmm. do that. So you put your own money. Or you had a sponsorship. I didn't. No, okay. I did not have a lot of sponsorships. I mm -hmm. just had one sponsor okay. and I couldn't raise uh, any money at all, basically. Okay. So I spent more than 25000 So how many people year. came for the TEDx talk? How many people were in the audience and how many mm -hmm. people you spoke? In your it depends on different tiers. In, in your case? Yeah, in my uh, the license that I got, I was only allowed to host my first event with 100 attendees and so it was a successful, like a sold out event. Mm -hmm. 100, uh, do they have attendees have to pay anything with this free? They do. No, attendees, uh, we have uh, event fees mm -hmm. uh, that we charge. How much is that? Yeah. So all these guidelines, they come straight from TED. Okay. I cannot create anything on my own. I have to follow certain guidelines that the event tickets can only be for my tier, cannot exceed a hundred dollar, which was in twenty twenty three. Sure. This year, can, the, can change, yeah, yeah sure, it, it's yeah, going to okay. change. And how many speakers you had? Last in my first event last year, we had five speakers and a performer. So one uh, element that we have for in TEDx, which not a lot of people know is along with the inspiring talks, there's always a uh, entertainment element as sure. well. Mm -hmm. So in my first event, we had five speakers and one performer. And did you, were you also a speaker? Or? No, I was not the speaker in okay. my event. So how did you figure it out that you are not a good speaker before you started in TEDx? How, how? I don't know. Sin since but now you, you like sound kid, perfect. You know, oh, so. Thank you so yeah, much. Sure. No, I appreciate that. I don't know. Since I was a kid, I have always been like very shy and introverted. I never did uh, stage performances, never took participated in dance or theater or anything like that. I never even took part in debates. So I always had this fear of public mm -hmm. speaking. Uh, but in 2021, when I decided that I wanted to overcome this fear. So every year I'm like, I like to challenge myself with new opportunities. So now let's talk about your expertise, which is cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. And so you work with, uh, what did you do at the All States? Uh, at Allstate, I was managing two different product verticals. One was cybersecurity and the other one was digit digital family safety. Okay. And uh, before that, you worked for at and Yes. So prior to joining Allstate, I spent almost uh, a little over two years with Allstate. Uh, prior to Allstate, I was working with a company called Lookout, which is a leader in the mobile security. And at Lookout, I was hired to manage the entire product portfolio for at and where I was managing three different products like AT&T, mm -hmm. Active Armor, AT&T Mobile Security, and AT&T Business Wi-Fi. Okay. What are some of the tips you will give to avoid uh, how not get into the trap of? Sure. Yeah. So some of the basic tips, best practices that I always share is always use strong and complex passwords. It should be a mix of uh, letters and numbers and special uh, characters. Always uh, use VPN when you're on a public hotspot. Mm -hmm. Always uh, update your software's uh, system software, your phone software, your operating systems. Uh, make sure they are not uh, they they are not like uh, vulnerable. Uh, always be uh, on the lookout for not clicking on any links on the email. So my question is that we get these um, you know all these spams emails mm -hmm. with the exact logo and everything yes. and you know all these traps. So my question is that if the digital technology and security, mm -hmm. everything you can track down, yeah. why these criminals are not tracked down right away? What 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 is what is the delay factor there? Yeah, with AI, I think because uh, with the AI, the bot bots are generating these kind of scams. It's very hard for a human to identify it, mm -hmm. like detect it at that faster rate as compared to how this AI like bots are creating these uh, phishing scams. So it takes a little while for a human eye to... So the emails we are getting, basically they are bots. They, they are basically they are bots, bots, yeah. Bots yeah. And, and also now we have we started to get a lot of these phone calls. Yes. Also, they are also bots yeah, generated yeah. as well. Yes. Where, where did you grow up in, in India? Sure, yeah. I was born and raised in Indore, uh, MP. MP, uh -huh. yeah. And I did my first master's in computer engineering. From where? From, from Indore itself. From, from yeah. Indore. Yeah. 
and then you come to us in which year i we moved to you we moved to boston in 2010 2010 yes. okay and then what did you do at the harvard university uh, at Harvard, I did my second master's in information management systems. Mm -hmm. And that's where I learned about the latest technology in cloud security, cybersecurity, and all the courses related to security. Yeah. And that's how I got my interest and in my first job in cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. So I started teaching at cloud as, a st as an assistant faculty for almost six years for the cloud security course. And where was that? Is that where did you teach? That was at Harvard University in Boston. At Harvard yeah, University in Cambridge, Boston. Yeah, Cambridge, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so, did you also, uh, somewhere I read that uh, you were involved with uh, Harvard Business Review some, in some capacity? I did. So, last year I joined Harvard, Harvard Business, Business Review uh, as their advisory council. So, I helped them, I helped the research community at Harvard in reviewing the content that's published at the Harvard Business Review. I share Related my expertise in leadership and management. Oh, and that is the cyber security. No, not in cyber security. Yeah. Well, Harvard Business Review is my favorite magazine. Okay. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. You know, I love to read that. I just have absolutely uh, fantastic concepts uh -huh. and everything. And uh, some of their articles are really thought, thought, yeah. thought provoking, give a lot of. Uh, I always, you know, yeah. uh, uh, read that. So uh, now uh, talk about the mentorship, you know, mm. that you also mentor mm. a lot of students. Yeah. And also your what uh, your involvement with the North, Northeastern University. Sure. Yeah. So I have been mentoring with many uh, nonprofit organizations. I was a mentor with Women Who Win for one year. I have been a mentor with Women Impact Tech. I've also been acting as a mentor in a UK based STEM uh, nonprofit organizations that focuses on encouraging more women to join the STEM uh, industry. Uh, at Harvard University, I have been associated with Harvard Graduate School and have been mentoring the graduate students how to get into cybersecurity, like what's the potential career path that they can take. Mm -hmm. I'm also associated with Mass Cyber Center. So tell us about Mass Cyber Center. Yeah, Mass Cyber Center is an organization that uh, helps uh, other organizations, uh, businesses and government agencies and communities Build cybersecurity oh. resilient. And this is a non-profit organization, right? It is mm -hmm. a non-profit, yes. Non mm -hmm. sure. And so now you mentioned about STEM. And since you mm -hmm. yourself are yeah. uh, a woman in, yeah. in cybersecurity in tech mm -hmm. area, so what are some of the big challenges for, for women uh, you know, in, in, in the context of STEM? What is the situation there? Yeah, so a lot of women, I feel they are afraid of getting into STEM or even if they join STEM, they quit pretty quickly in a year or two. I think the biggest challenge that they face is the long working hours and it's a very stressful, like a demanding job, especially when you're talking about software development, like programming. And although like from, from my example itself, if you can take, I did my two masters in software engineering related to First, software engineering, second, information management systems, mm. both very technical fields. But somehow uh, I couldn't envision myself sitting into a cubicle mm. and doing programming whole day. And that is why I started my career in product management. And that is one thing that a lot of women are not aware about. When they talk about STEM, all they think about, especially in the software terms that, oh, we have to do coding. Mm. But that's not the only path that you can take. Mm. And that is what... Uh, my expertise come in and that's what how I guide uh, girls at Harvard mm. that what are the different potential paths career paths that you can take it's not only about coding you can be an analyst you can be into cyber security like testing uh, uh, testing and penetration mm. you can be into product management like managing cyber security products you can manage cyber security projects and related to AI and stuff. So it's not only the coding piece, but there are several other paths also that you can take. And how you are involved with Northeastern University? At Northeastern, I've been working as a guest lecturer for their privacy, security, and sustainability class. So um, Menka, let's have some fun. Sure. <laughs> so my first question to you is, uh, uh, who is Menka Haryan? I'm a very passion-driven, curious individual. I would say. So what is passion for you? Like, you know, what, what is it you are so passionate about? I am passionate about many different things. I love to do multiple tasks. I'm like a multitasker. 
I love to do all I always have a side hustle along with my full time job. I'm passionate. I have a very like a uh, versatile, varied interests from skydiving to learning AI and uh, implementing technology, uh, creating innovative products. And so now skydive sounds yeah. very interesting. Yeah. So I, I have only heard about it that I yeah. see in the television. Yeah. But I cannot imagine doing uh -huh. that. Okay. Have you done skydiving? I have done skydiving multiple times. So when like when did it happen first time and how did it happen? The first time was long ago, maybe in 2010. Hmm. I did a tandem uh, skydive. I did a tandem jump where I was attached to the instructor and I didn't jump, jump solo. And that's what caught my attention. And I was so curious to learn how does this canopy work? How do uh, how do you navigate directions when you're high up in the air, like 18,000 feet above the ground? So you, you jump from a helicopter? Jump from the plane. From the plane. Yeah. Okay. I jumped first time with, like I said, with the tandem instructor. And then I decided to do a certification because I wanted to jump solo. And then I did my skydiving certification uh, back in 2016 and I jumped solo. So you were the first person I meeting who okay. had done this. I'm not really, but anyway, well, so okay. so how was the experience? Like, you know, was it scary or? I, it was nerve wracking. Uh, it was very scary at first, but then it was like liberating and you feel like completely free. Hmm. You feel like full freedom. And how long that. you were there from when you jumped from there till you come to the earth? Yeah, so I jumped from 18,000 feet above the ground and uh, it barely takes one minute. Okay. Just one minute? No, one minute when you're like free falling. Okay. And then it took me like three to four minutes to land to the ground by myself. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. And uh, so how many times you have done this in, in the last uh, 15 years? Uh, maybe five to seven times. Five to seven times. Yeah, yeah. And it's always 18,000 feet or you... No, 18,000 feet was the one, the highest when I jumped solo. Uh, my other jumps have always been around 12,000 to 14,000 feet. 14,000. Yeah. Uh, what else you have done fun, fun like this? Yeah, no, I, after doing uh, my certification in skydiving, I started to learn how to be a helicopter pilot. I took almost 10 to 12 lessons and I wanted to be a commercial pilot. Mm. But then I caught caught to my, like caught up by my other responsibilities and commitments, mm -hmm. so I couldn't finish that course and get my license. But that is something that I still enjoy and do like on and off during summers. So my again, like if I see you, you are doing so much, so many stuff yeah. like you know, cyber security, mentoring, teaching, mm -hmm. uh, TEDx, which was fun, yeah. skydiving, and um, uh, so this is how how you you do all these things you know what what drives you to do all these things yeah like i said like i said i'm a very passionate driven individual and i feel very fortunate that i have a family backing like full support from my husband and my daughter so every time i say i want to do this i want to go snowmobiling my daughter is my biggest supporter and my cheerleader and she she would always say as compared to other kids who might say, oh, mom, we need you. We need you to be there with us or we need your attention or you have to take us, run us, run with us to these classes. My daughter's first response would always be, if you want to do it, mom, go and do it. So how old is your daughter? My daughter is uh, 15, right? Uh, what do you think is that uh, secret of a really good uh, married life or family life? I and who is responsible for that? I think everybody is responsible to have a successful relationship, mm -hmm. no matter what it is. And I think trust really plays a very key factor. And and what uh, uh, interested you in science and technology when you were growing up in India? Yeah, I always, like I said, I always wanted to uh, learn how the technology works behind the science. And that is what caught me, like how how the technical things work. So if you're telling, if I'm talking about skydiving, how does the, how do you open the canopy? How do you navigate in the directions? All the technology behind the science. Uh, so Menika, thank you very much for your time. And we will see you on March 8th. Thank you so much for having me. Excellent. It was a pleasure. Sure.